so much work going in behind the scenes to get this tournament off and running. There have been a huge amount of people involved. You can see their next matchup. Radicani taking on Naomi Brody. Radicani's had a fantastic week. That's a couple of points on offer here and with the Bulldogs just ahead by one point. This one is a crucial one. So we will have these players walking out on court and Alvin Palmer is going to introduce them. Match number two, representing the Bulldogs, Emma Radicanu. And for the Union Jacks, Naomi Brody. Yes, we are getting into the heart of the day here, aren't we? And what a day it should be, because uh, a winner piece so far. It's a relatively cool afternoon now. Cool late morning, isn't it? So just before 10 to 12, here's Naomi Brody up against Emma Radukanu. It's a match that uh, has two points on the line. The uh, number of points on offer will increase throughout the course of the day. And the next couple of singles matches on here were three and then four for the mixed and then five for the final mixed and the final match of the day. Jamie Murray will be alongside Heather Watson for a second evening running. Nick Lester is my name alongside Naomi Cavaday. How are you doing, Cap? Yeah, good, thanks. Looking forward to the day. It's, uh, I think it might come down to the wire. Yeah, it may well do. surprise. Naomi Brody choosing to serve. First up. And these two players playing this week for the first time. Naomi Brody haven't seen too much of her in singles have we out here. She's been uh, largely playing on the secondary court. Emma Raducanu has been out here a fair bit. Actually played Jody Burridge yesterday over on the second court. So both have had a, a fair bit of tennis to enjoy it over the course of the week. Naomi Brody's had a lot of matches, like so many of them, over the last month. She's been, uh, of course, trying to get back to full form and fitness. Having had that horrible ankle, ankle injury, wasn't it, last year, Kev? Yeah went over on it and it's a, it's a really difficult one to come back from because even when you do get to be fit and healthy it's just having that confidence in the ankle to slam the 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 brakes on when you get pushed out wide it, it does take a little while to build that back up but uh, yeah good to see Brody out and getting lots of matches on court yeah this week she uh, had a win over Eden Silver lost to Maya Lunston also lost to Beth Gray in singles as you can see her little profile there big Manchester City fan is Naomi you must have played Naomi did you a few times oh yeah absolutely played dubs together played against each other in singles she's the one year below me so yeah know her very well this will be a different prospect for Radicani. you've got the single hand a backhand you've got a serve coming from a real Two height minutes. with Brody being taller than the other uh, women in this event 
And I think it's much more, when you're playing against Brody, it's much more about absorbing the pace, being really consistent, trying to expose the movement in the wings a little bit. So a different challenge for Raducanu. Emma Raducanu, just 17 years of age. Certainly uh, highly thought of. It's the uh, lady who's ranked 338 in the world, just off a, a career high, has already won three ITF titles at the lower levels, won the $25,000 event in India last year. This year made the final of the same level of event in Sunderland. What have you made of her tennis this week? I think it's been really good. It's been a fantastic One experience for her to have you know, so many people on the bench and giving her advice and getting a run out against these top players because it'll be a little bit of time and she has to wait until that ranking jumps up at one more level really before she can be playing against these sorts of players week in week out but she's been full of confidence she's been really aggressive she's worked incredibly hard on the court as well and I think it was a little bit of a shock to the system when she played against Heather Watson she got kind of uh, rolled over there with uh, just such a huge amount of quality from the end of Heather Watson I mean but Heather is a top 50 player and she played like it. So that was really good for Radakani to kind of feel that level, feel the difference. And now she can go away and try and improve in those areas that might have made that match a bit tighter. We talked quite a lot, didn't we, a couple of days ago, especially against Heather, of her using the block return a little more. She didn't actually use it a whole lot against Heather, but one would imagine today it could well come into play and could be quite an important weapon. Absolutely. We've got a big serve coming down, as I mentioned, from a height. So if she's going to look to try and take that up on the baseline, that forehand block return, I think, could really be crucial. And she Brody had used class. it well against Jody, serve. but against Heather, not so much because there's just a little less pace on the serve from Watson. So she probably favours just getting a strike in and getting over the top of the, the forehand there. But absolutely, she's trying to play with a little bit more variety. That's something that Mark Petchy has been adding to her game, which she says is very different to any other coach that she's ever worked with. And it's actually going to really suit the matchup in terms of Brody because it's something Brody doesn't necessarily enjoy as much. Yeah, Mark's been out here the last month or so working with uh, Emma, just helping her out. Very super academic young lady is Emma Raducanu. She's going to be doing a levels in both maths and economics. I'll we'll give you an idea. Yeah. So Naomi Brody up against Emma Raducanu. Brody, 30 years of age, so some 13 years between the two. duty today for Naomi. She'll be playing mixed with Andy Murray on the fourth match on here. Naomi Brody to say. Brother serve. playing on the opposite team is currently on court Play. number one. We'll be sure to keep you abreast of what's going on there. Lucky team. As far as the Brody serves concerned, we know it's got pace. What else makes it uncomfortable? Well, as I mentioned, coming down from such a height, it's incredibly flat when it comes through as well. It just means that you have to adjust your return position. You can't be in the same spot that you would normally be in. It will just get up a little higher on you. see there that Radicano was taking that serve, that second serve well inside the baseline just to stop it getting up so high so she can take it at shoulder height. But for Brody, when she had that you know, phenomenal time through 2015 and 2016, got up to the top 100, career high of 76. I mean, so much of it was about the serve. Oh. 
She was also ripping some That's beautiful single-handed backhands just like that one. But the serve was just so consistently reliable. You, could, you just knew it was going to be there, getting so many cheap points every game. Yeah, I mean, semis in Quebec, didn't she, in 2015? That was a, a big week for her there. Semis in Kuala Lumpur in 2016. Mr. Bouchard made the quarters in Auckland that year as well. Around at the US Open. Was firmly in her face. That's what she did well. Yeah, Radicanu will not have too much of a problem, I think, extending the rallies here. She'll feel like that that is working in her favour. Ducanu. Certainly going to have to find a pass or two, you would have thought. First game. As she does in this opening game. We were looking through some numbers at Hawkeye sent us in terms of the overall picture of the top female players here this week. Backing up is uh, nothing to be afraid of here. You will get some pace coming through. Yeah, in terms of pure pace off the ground, Radu kind of actually won the lower ends off both the forehand and backhand. A lot of people are suggesting she hits a big ball, and of course she does, but actually it's more of a heavy ball off the forehand than it is necessarily a pacey ball when you compare it to someone like Katie Bolter. They're all kind of in that late 60s, early 70s off the forehand in terms of speed. Backhand side, Radu Kanu a little down. In fact, pure pace off the backhand. Actually, the lowest of the week in terms of the ladies. But uh, of course, up to 17 years of age, still a lot to physically develop. Yeah, there's a bit of a difference between an aggressive strike and an aggressive Emma, mindset. And I'd say that Radu Kanu really does have a, an aggressive mindset. She doesn't necessarily completely release all the way through her shots to get the maximum amount of pace. Like that one from Brody, for example. You don't see that so often from Radicanu. She's, there's always an element of control to her shots and shape. Might be. So, I mean, I'd like to see her bring it in occasionally just to have an in injection of pace. But we do see that from the likes of Bolter and Burridge. They kind of really flatten off and give it a crunch. As an athlete, where do you rate Radu Kanu? Well, she's very strong as an athlete. She's got really good movement, good power, good technique on all of the shots, so no holes there, really. It's all going to be about how she uses what she's got on the court. Oh, my word. Love 40. Well, that serve's just not going to cut it took the pace off and went wide, so you would have expected that serve to swing a bit more, but that was right in the slot for Brody. Oh! 
14. Gonna get some wild misses from Brody. That's how she plays. She likes to take a big wind up and be very aggressive off both sides. Get some cracking strikes. We've already seen that. Lob in these yes. swirly, awkward winds that we have right now. Plant the feet a little too early, you're going to be in trouble. So three break points come and go. Playing down at George's Hill, won eight of her seven matches last week in the UK Pro Series. Won every single match the week before, actually, was seven from seven there at St George's. So, certainly, is match tight. Advantage Raducanu. British tour here a few weeks ago as Andy Murray. It's a good hold. Five points Raducanu in a row. Raducanu up too low. Actually beat Jody Burridge at the final of the British Tour last month, did uh, Emma Raducanu. 15 love. Was due to play in the Progress Tour event, but uh, was forced to withdraw from that one. Go that prevented her from playing there and that has been something that's been quite difficult for her to manage over the last couple of years as she's been growing and filling out as a teenager she has had lots of kind of minor injuries nothing major to put her out for a while but she has had to pull out of a number of events a few errors and a few shorter balls. Yeah, it'll be the same off both wings, I think. 
one win over the fence. Get that I'll go and get that in a combination because Brody with those long levers does have a bit of a long wind up and she likes to kind of stand and strike. So if you take away that time, it can be difficult for her to find the right contact point. So Brody's on the board. Radu Kano leads by two games to one. But uh, down the early break. Just left of the cameraman. Got Thank the you. Balls down, I think we are as well. And then after that play, you still got time. But absolutely Dine. spot on tactically. Keep doing the same thing, keep going after it. Don't question yourself, just keep doing it. All right? And when it's there to finish, you finish it big. You gotta see if it's above the head, lighter than that. Here we go. The right sort of idea to try and kick it up there, but you've got to remember the height of Brody as well. And if she can get it around shoulder height, she will be relatively comfortable on it. She can fire away those backhands pretty effortlessly. So to try and get it up at head height, it's got to jump. And we don't have the warmest conditions here, so it will be a little bit of a fight for Radicanu if she's going to look to try and kick it up to that backhand. Dunlop balls that we're playing with this week do tend to fluff up a little 30, bit as well. 30. A little bit heavy. Yeah, I think the kick serve into the body is a little more effective with Brody. I mean, unless you really are getting it jumping up there just to jam her because then it doesn't need to be as high. It can kind of come around shoulder height, but if it's right at her, it's, diff it's still difficult for her to find that contact. Been a little too inconsistent so far. Here's Brody. Easy to play either at times, I wouldn't imagine, because you don't get too much in the way of rhythm, do you? No, absolutely not. That's exactly how she likes it. All on her terms. Big striking. Telling us four so far in this one. She's a, 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 
I'm sure two under what the uh, average for the week is. It's men and women combined. Singles, of course. able to bend that one a little out of reach for Brody. Mentioned the fact that she's now managed by IMG, Emma Raducanu. so much significant in terms of obviously brokering deals long term but it's also significant in terms of brokering wild cards isn't it opportunities yep. that is you know opportunities IMG obviously own a few events let's hope they still own some events when all this is said and done but just openings doors openings that potentially she will have oh yeah there's also contacts whenever you're looking for a coach speak to agents that have uh, connections with coach they know who's floating around and oh the horn is back I haven't missed it have <laughs> <laughs> i know i thought it was a wave of a day but that was silly of me but yeah that's always very helpful as well because it can be difficult to to know that to know who's available or who's interested or who wants to put their hat in the ring so Pretty good at kind of getting all that information for you. Brady not happy about that call. Very close on the line. Yeah, not defending the second serve well. Just one of six points, one behind it. A couple of doubles as well. Yeah, Radicani's taking that return very early. Keeping it simple there, really nice move forward. The difference there, she was pulled forward earlier on and she really struggled there because it's just a completely different mentality and you're a little bit off balance coming forward. Whereas when you decide to approach the net, you've got your head over the ball, it's much easier to get across and cover the net. Right, Penniston has a break on Liam Brody, but I can tell you it's break back point over on court one. Brody. Raducanu leads by three games to two. So Emma Raducanu still in the lead here. Three two first set. Let's have a quick chat with uh, Greg Rosetsky. Greg, we just heard a little bit of the information you, you were giving out. What are the messages you're trying to get across to Naomi today? Well, very easy. She's got to serve well, be aggressive, come forward, attack and basically give Emma no rhythm out there whatsoever. Once you give her a rhythm and you're moving right, left, you're playing the wrong game style. So for Naomi, it's very, very simple out there. Be the boss, be aggressive, don't give her any rhythm, and keep on attacking her. Does it differ in terms of end-to-end, -end, Greg? Because obviously the end you're at seems to be from where the wind is coming. How does that sort of affect court position? And we heard you saying to Naomi a little bit about don't feel like you have to step in. What are the differences from end-to-end -end here? Well, the side Naomi was just on, obviously she's with the wind, so it's a little bit easier to serve. The ball goes through the court. And then on the opposite side, you're against the wind. So when you hit into it, you can be more aggressive and more positive because the ball's not going to stay along. Good stuff. Thanks, Greg. Thank you.
15. Missing that serve just by a little way, possibly the wind getting involved. It really is swirly today. Wind more behind Radicanu at the, the moment, as we heard from Greg. Didn't hit the slot with the serve again, and Brody able to get a good clean hit on the return. It's won a number of ITF titles. In fact, if you look back at her record, as Naomi was saying, been playing a long time. 2009, she really won her first ITF titles, won four that year in singles. Then won four. Three in 2014. Doubles has had significant success. I think one of the big titles she picked up was in uh, in Midland, in Michigan, the $100,000 event there. That's a uh, a real favorite with a lot of players. I played out there myself. It's, uh, it's just such a well-run tournament. Everything is catered for, and all of the players getting involved with local schools and going out and doing field trips and trying to inspire the next generation. Are there parts of the world where the, the hundreds and the 60s and the 25s are, are sort of players are catered for better than, than other parts of the world? I mean, yeah, well, I mean, it depends. So, for example, if you play out in the States, you very often have host families. All the members of the club say, yeah, we'll put up a player or two in our house, and they look after you really well. They drive you around. Sometimes they cook lunch for you. And more importantly, they come and cheer you on. It's really nice to have that level of support, You're typically traveling on your own. get a little bit of that oh, out in, in Australia as well. The European tournaments, you're much more left to your own devices. It's more of a hotel and tournament sort of thing, even though the tournaments are run very well themselves. But again, because the community gets so involved out in the States, they then ask for a little bit back from the players. And as I say, we, we would go out to the schools and do some talks and demonstrations. Oh, she read it well. Yes. She laughs because she knows she got away with it a little bit, but it was a good read. Yeah, I remember the first time I played in, uh, in Midland, in Michigan. It's in the winter as well. You're talking about minus 30 degrees Celsius outside. We were playing indoors, so it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't too painful. But I think I got my scheduling a little bit wrong at that time. So I played in Midland, and then I think the next week I was playing in India in 30 degrees plus and it okay. didn't didn't sit so well <laughs> with the body. Slight climatic change, Kev. <laughs> Slight change in string tension, I would have thought as well. <laughs> from one to the other. I'm not going to lie, it was a bit of a disaster. Did not play well. It's also pretty much the other side of uh, the world, so to do that in a, a short space of time is tough. Fast indoor courts outside. We've all made mistakes when it comes to sh scheduling. That was one of mine. Game, Raducanu. The serve was very close indeed, wasn't it? Radicano leads by games to two. We just caught the outside edge of the line. Yeah, for Brody, I was just uh, chatting with her earlier in the week. She says she's been very much enjoying lockdown, getting all the all the family back under one roof. Of course, she would have loved to have been out playing and competing, but taking the positives from the situation. saying her mum's had quite a job on her hand to feed all of her kids and uh, with a couple of athletes on the, on the roster they do churn through some food yeah. her brother I can tell you is back on serve in the first set against Ryan Penniston 3-4 over there
Dirty love. Just see there Raducanu trying to match Brody for pace and just got a little out of control. You are going to have to accept just soaking it up on occasion. It is a, a quality strike. There's some players at the side there. Harriet Dart, Beth Gray. They've played some good doubles together this week. Couple of wins on the board for them as a pair. Both Bulldogs. Good serve from Naomi Brody. First serve percentage in the high 50s right now. And it's just the one break, 4-3. Yathavon, who uh, also played Naomi Brody on a few occasions, so well aware of her strengths and weaknesses. To her body. Just coming on the screen here if you want to see it. Yeah, so far, 50% of free points off the serve for Rado Carney. Not enough returns being made. Greg, full of positive energy as always. Flight 
past today has moved slightly more directly overhead because <laughs> the planes were definitely not quite as close to us over the course of the week. Tasty. Ready, leads by really under too much pressure so far on our own deal. Came away from this opening set. Of course, part of the LTA's PSP program is Emma Raducanu. It's a good deal of funding that's uh, distributed towards her team for them to and distribute in the way they see fit. Now she's just not getting a huge amount of rhythm from the Brody game, which is exactly what Greg Rosetsky was requesting. Saying Brody's just got to keep aggressive, get that strike in, not give her the rhythm to really find her range. But it's just that the unforced error is a little bit out of control for Brody at the minute. Set slipping away. Yeah, Radicani just hanging in long enough for the error to come. Oof. That one got away from her. Love 40. So just half an hour or so this opening set. Is Strike up the line from Radu Kanu. By six games to three. And the 17 year old looking to put some more points on the board for the British Bulldogs. 6 3. You know what's coming, you've got to feel for it. Yeah. And then it's all you, all you. Doing yeah, a nice set from Emma. She is definitely facing a different challenge in Naomi Brody. Not a lot of rhythm, some big strikes coming at her. And we did see a few great winners from Brody early on, but then those unforced errors, he's just getting up to eight, really catching up as this set progressed. Brody also struggling off the second serve, only winning 27% of those points. Radicanu taking it so early inside the baseline. But all in all, Radicanu just making one too many balls for Brody at the moment. And the unforced error is just coming from the end of the Jacks. Fast start and a fast finish to set number one Here we for 17-year-old right right who's uh, Romanian and Chinese nice. parents speaks Mandarin I'm told it's pretty impressive many talents Emma plans in the Second next few weeks is she competition wise we know what Emma's doing well it's difficult to know really I think for her sort of ranking just outside 300 
Not a huge amount of options. I was wondering if she was going to play any British you, tours or the St George's Hill Masters it, of the Pro Series there. Yeah, I mean, look, she would love to get back out and play international events. If that's an option, I'm sure that's where she will be. But it might be the case that the, the British tours in St George's Hill is where she will focus. She's played in the British tour. She won one already over the past month. Oh. She loves yeah, to she compete, loves. and it's incredibly crucial at this stage of her development. You know, you go through a period of time when you're kind of a young teenager that your coach is giving you the most information, but then once you've got the weapons and kind of the game in place, it's your opponent that will tell you what's what most of the time. For example, when she played Heather Watson the other day, told quite bluntly by Heather that certain shots weren't good enough and we're going to get dealt with. 40 love. And that's about, that's that experience that we talk about that you just need to pick up and you just do that by getting the hours out on the court. Of course, Emma actually won the uh, won an award, didn't she, a couple of days ago? Yeah, the LTA Awards, the uh, Junior Girl Player of the Year. She, of course, comes from Kent, and it was another Kent player who won the uh, Junior Boy Player of the Year. Ben Gusick won after his triumph in Orange Bowl. So, strong stuff from that county. Yay, Raducanu. First game, second set. Tell us about him youngster who won the orange bowl what do you know about him ben well he uh he's <laughs> very small for his age but he really has a fantastic movement he is super consistent i mean he is beating guys who are you know feet taller than him at the moment um that tom is out on clay works with a, uh, a coach of mine that i know very well simon greaves down in canterbury and uh, a real prospect for the future very competitive. He knows how to win at a young age. We also had awards for Women's Player of the Year. Joe Conter picked that one up, and men's, which was Dan Evans, as well as other. Fantastic Chief. awards There's one behind for the, the fence. Thanks, mate. community venue, for example, volunteers, you club of the year, competition of the year. I'm sure this event will be in the running for competition of the year next year. It stops a run of 10 points in a row for Emma Raducanu. Thirty forty.
Let's first service. looking to stretch out a bit here really just has had a little too much consistency for Brody so far oh, that's her best shot of the day arguably under pressure yes. it's so nice when she gets it right A lot of brute force behind it. It's good stuff. A shape to that one. Rodukanu taking it up the line, maybe too aggressively. She'd switched off momentarily, but tremendous balance. Yes. It was good scrambling from Brody. Maybe just a little unexpected that she was going to be able to get this shot back and get it back so well. Law, but one game more. Naomi Brody upping her level to get a good hold. It's going to be really crucial here that Raducanu manages to maintain her concentration. The combination of the Brody game style and the wind just making rhythm and just life in general very difficult. You're not going to feel 100% like you're just striking it clean. You're not going to get shots, long rallies, time after time to really get your eye in. And it's very easy to drift off mentally when it, it just feels a bit bitty. for the high ball there Brody and just reminding herself she's got the wind behind her and just helped carry that ball out it doesn't really matter what the situation is it doesn't matter how you feel this match is going the energy 
on the court, whether you feel like you've got momentum, that strike is always around. A couple of winners can just sail past you very quickly. Team. Oh. Game so, oh, good serving Radicanu. from Radu Kanu. Just keeping foot on the gas here, looking to accelerate on. She's up a set two. Go, go, to her. go straight to her. Either straight to her or wherever she's approached from. Okay. Yeah? Oh. Because she comes in and she closes the net well, but she's also not, she's not going to come in. I think she's going to once or twice this set, so. and yeah. you're in control of most of the rallies, so. Yeah. Again, on the return game, just keep moving around. Mm -hmm. Try to give her different looks, but it's got to be the urgency with your feet to get them out. Yeah? Yeah. Done. Let's get it. Come on. Yeah. Here we go. Everyone. Fine, yeah. Here we go. Everyone now. Energy ramping up from uh, all those involved here at the Battle of the Brits Team Tennis. It's been a very intense week, that's for sure. Competition has been of the highest order. All those have been really bought into the team event. Love the team. Yeah, the depth just beating the single-hander there. Just didn't quite have enough time to get all the way through her swing. And Radicani just having a chat with her camp. And Kiyothavong and Alistair Gray getting involved. She's just saying she's a little unsure of what to do when Brody comes forward because she does have such long arms. It can be really tough to get it away from her. Their suggestion saying just go right back at her. Try and hit the body, make her move out of the way. Oh. You do often get it with players where the movement is just a little bit of a vulnerability and not super explosive off the mark. They can tend to close down the space quite often. The back behind can be useful. tends to be the players that really back themselves in their 15, speed 30. and movement around the court that might hold in the corner and give you a little look at the space, but so confident on playing on the run. Got to be careful here, Brody. Doesn't want this to slip away. If she can keep the score close, then hope she'll be hoping that at the back end of the set she can just string together some big strikes. 14 unforced errors now for Naomi Brody. One more ensures the break in the second. Radicanu leads by three games to the one. Problems mount. Oh, this lady. Yeah, from the back of the court, really does look like Radicanu's got Brody's number, doesn't it? She's often caught 
off balance. Brody's not getting a good read on where Emma's going to strike. So even from quite a neutral position in the court, we've seen some winners come from Raducanu as Brody either gets stuck in the middle or she goes the wrong way. Fifteen love. taking set number one. Court one. Fifteen all. Against Ryan Penniston. British Bulldogs going well in this second round of matches. Fifteen forty. Brody showing a, a bit of grit of her own hanging into that rally, the forehand slice causing an issue for Radakanu. to break back immediately from Radicanu Naomi leads Brody. By three games to two. Three two. We are back on serve in this second set. Let's have a quick chat with uh, and not easy playing Naomi, is it? Because I'm sure you've experienced many times. You don't get much rhythm, and do you out there? And, it, and I guess patience is required as well. Yeah, that's, I think that's an understatement. Um, <laughs> you know, there's, there's tricky conditions as well. It's quite breezy, and um, you can hear what Greg's encouraging her to do. Just you know, go for it, hit it as hard as you can. So, um, you know, Emma's just trying to absorb it as well as she can. She it doesn't have to be perfect tennis out here from Emma. It just has to be good enough. And um, once she gets into the baseline exchanges, Emma is. Yeah, the better player. And what about um, the overall performance of Radicanu through the whole week? Seven days now, she's been out on court an awful lot. She's played some more experienced opponents and she's been the favourite in the summer. What do you think? Has she developed through this week? Yeah, I think so. I mean, she obviously needs to learn how to manage her time and um, the emotional energy that goes into everything. There have been long days out here, but she's absolutely enjoyed the experience. She keeps telling me every day how much she wants to be out there competing, so that's really refreshing for me as captain to hear. Good stuff. Thanks, Anne. Fifteen love. Brody stringing a few of these winners together now. It's nice to hear, isn't it? A young player who's urging and saying, "You want to play? I want to get out there." That's just what you want.
Did that makes not? the captain's job a lot easier if you've got everybody sticking their hand up and you can choose from the bunch. It's a lot to manage with 13 players in each team. You've got some some who just want to play doubles and not the singles, like, for example, with an Andy. Others picking up injuries, as we saw with Cam Norrie yesterday. To try and not overdo it for the players, but try and get them out there as much as possible. Flat strike and through the court quickly. Getting on to Radu Kanu. Didn't give her any time at all. Aggressive hitting from Raducanu. Getting herself up the court. She doesn't want to sit back. It's easy to do because there have been so many errors from Brody that you can just think, OK, let's just make balls, let's extend the rallies, those errors will come. But they've dried up now. A couple of winners coming as well. So Raducanu needs to try and take control. 40-30. for Brody. Turn, causing all sorts yes. of problems. She's hit a purple patch here. Yeah, Brody striking Brody. it so well. It's big shot after big strike. She went for it. Advantage. It was ambitious Radicana. from that situation to go max pace. Yeah, didn't hold it back there, was there? It's a wild finish and a break point for Radu Kanu again. Oh. She's getting caught a little deep, Jeez. isn't she, at the moment? for the return.
too far away in her defense. Brody's trying to ramp it up now, isn't she? Every shot she's looking to strike. Tremendous return. Patience Raducanu from Radu Kanu. Quiet out here today. It's given her another break. Yeah, good maturity there as well, responding. Brody upping her level, trying to do something a, a little different, upping the intensity and the pace going at Radu Kanu. But Radu Kanu saying, OK, fine, I'm going to have to deal with that. I did it well. Let's for service. actually have two additional cameras for Hawkeye Live on the court this week. 12 cameras as opposed to the, the usual 10 for Hawkeye Live. Love 30. A couple of big backhand returns we've seen in this game from Brody. Looks like she's really finding her range. Just never know what is around the corner. You know it's going to be big from Brody. Whether it's going to be a winner or an error. Just have to wait and see. That's good work there from Radicani. She's just able to maintain that quality effortlessly when she's pushed into the corners. Moving through the shot as she plays, she does it well as well when she's pushed back on the V. Didn't see it in that point, she stayed tight to the baseline, but if she is forced back, you know, really just keep the level high. Doesn't go for a defensive shot. Not sure that's where she was aiming. She did have <laughs> half the court. Okay, 
Emma Raducanu. So Emma Raducanu taking control of things. She has an iron grip on this match now, up a set and 5-2. She's heading for victory. Come on, James. <laughs> Give yourself a bit more time if you feel you need to. You've got your eye in on the return. It's all good. points just around the corner it would seem for the British Bulldogs here. Naomi Brody hasn't quite been able to be consistent enough having contributed towards the Union Jacks tally this week. Couple of good mixed doubles wins with the Lloyd Glass fall. But in singles as well. Second service. Suffocating Brody for time. Yeah, it's been a really lo a lot of good stuff in this performance from Radicani. Really getting the balance nicely. She, it's the sort of match where you kind of have to be a bit reactive. It's just never entirely sure what's coming your way. just absorbing the information, digesting it and trying to make the best possible decisions. Beat her in one direction there, wasn't she? 40, <laughs> Almost like stubbornly refusing to go to the open court. Yeah, she'd set up the court really well, hadn't she? But that was the one to go into the space. Brody was not only pushed out wide, but she was a bit off balance on that particular shot. So closing down the gap wasn't really a possibility.
Yes. Just getting pushed back behind the baseline, not where she wants to be. Advantage Brody. It's just such a good strike, isn't it? Just needs to try and find just a, a little more with the base level. The winners are absolutely fabulous. And the strike is just, oh, it just looks quite effortless. Brody, I've seen it on a couple of occasions today, going all out and keeping herself above water in this match. 83 miles an hour, Hawkeye telling us. You've got to remember, she's been a top 100 player. She has played at that level. She was in the top 200 for a, an awfully long time weapons like this you can understand why so chance for 17 year old to shut the gates here at 5-3 15 love technically a very sound serve isn't it talked about that a few times this week a lot to like about the way she plays Let's first service. Periods of the match, questionably. 15 all. One of the best returns as well. Ahead in the point. Yeah, she got up on the front foot after that deep return and then just stayed there. Big front foot hitting, corner to corner. Challenging no, return there, Brody. The off backhand. Yeah, made sure she found the single hander, didn't she? Off the first serve, took a little bit of pace off it. That's you all. So just a little in the slot from Radicanu. So Brody getting a nice strike on the forehand. Of course, we will see Emma later on in mixed as well. She'll be partnering Joe Salisbury. They take on Andy Murray and Naomi Brody. Use the wind effectively. 40-30. 17-year-old from Kent. Worked her way to match point here. Two more points for the British Bulldogs. Another good win for the 17-year-old Emma Raducanu. She has been impressive all week. And 
she overcomes Naomi Brody for the loss of just six games here. Big smile on her face. Three and three. She's so victorious. Yeah, it was. It really just was a little bit too good for Naomi Brody. Even the experience that she possesses as a former top 100 player. So really positive for Radicani. <laughs> spoken like a true athlete. Just All wanted right. to pick up the win. Get ready for the next she did it in style. Yeah. Really did play well. Had to contend with an awful lot. Conditions were tricky. Brody game style very different to anything she's really experienced through this week. And it was really tidy all round, to be honest. More winners than unforced errors for Raducanu from the back of the court. She was being nice and steady there. And you can see Brody's unforced errors just getting a little out of control. Even though she did manage to pull back a lot of winners in that second set, just wasn't quite enough. The big standout area for Brody, that second serve, only winning 26% of those points. Raducanu was taking it early. She was being aggressive. She was getting a foothold in the point. Let's head downstairs. Arv Palmer's waiting with the questions. Emma, well done. Uh, fantastic match. What pleased you the, the most today? Thank you very much. I think that what pleased me the most was it, the conditions were quite tricky. It was uh, quite blustery. The, wind, the ball was swirling around. But, um, yeah, we managed to maintain... I managed to hold most of my service games, which was going to be very important this match because Naomi's serve is absolutely massive. So... Uh, very pleased about that and I'm most pleased about getting a, a win for the Bulldogs because the last few days, I mean, I've lost a couple tight matches, but um, yeah, I'm just really pleased to have backed that up with a win for today when it really matters. And uh, how hard is it to, to find rhythm when you're playing against someone like Naomi? Hit so big from the back of the court, as you say, it's tough conditions today. Yeah, it's, it's tough to find a rhythm. I think the most important thing is to try and make a play on her service games, just try and get every first serve return back into court. And uh, from there, just try to build the point, which um, I actually really backed myself once the rally got going. But in, yeah, I mean, I most struggled with getting her serve back because it's so good. Well, overall, it's been a fantastic week for you. Uh, what will you take from a week like this? Yeah, I take that. I mean, this team event experience has been absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, if it happened again, I mean, I'd be more than up for it because it's so much fun. But um, yeah, it's just great to play alongside other teammates who are supporting you and they want you to win equally as much as you want yourself to win. So um, yeah, it's just a really fun week. Congratulations. Thank well you. Done. Yeah, maturity, certainly you feel beyond her years, Emma Raducanu, and will be fun to hopefully watch her development over the next couple of years. Let's hope that she can uh, get out here and compete certainly domestically over the course of the next month and then we'll see how things pan out across the globe it's a lovely attitude so good to see the thirst she has to kind of represent her team this week in a fun experience for this 17 year old